Hi. Um, if you're new to the school district, welcome. My name is Corey Romden. I'm the IT guy here at the high school. Um, I'm going to go through a few videos, this is the first of them, that will touch on some training topics to get you more familiar with the tools that we use every day here at LC. So the first one we're going to go over is your Gmail account, your Google account. So we'll start by going to gmail.com and you'll have to enter your email and your password. Now your email address is the first letter of your first name and your last name. Followed by at luxcasco.k12.wi.us and you do have to enter in the whole thing. Google treats your email address as outside of their own domain since it has an at luxcasco domain name. So since it's not at Gmail, you do have to enter the entire email address. So next is your password. If you didn't get your password yet, you'll have to talk to me or Scott Waldo or Matt Kinnard or Brent Smeester. So that would be just talk to your building tech guy and we'll be able to give you your password. So you can go ahead and type in your password and that'll bring you to your Gmail inbox. Um, the first time you log in, you'll probably get a few menus that you have to click through, uh, terms and conditions, you might have to change your password, things like that. So the first thing we'll look at is if you want to change your password in Google, in the upper right hand corner of any of the services, you'll see your profile. And if you click on that, you can go to account. So this brings up your account information, and we'll go to the security tab, and then you'll be able to change your password right from here. So you'll have to type in your current password, and then you'll have to type in your new password twice, and new passwords in Google need to be at least char eight characters long, and they can't be something you've used already. So I'm going to switch over to Chrome now we're back in my inbox. Uh, the first thing we'll go over is how to compose a new email. So over here on the left we've got this big compose button. You've got the to field, you've got CC and BCC, and you have to actually click on those to get those fields to show up. So if I start typing an email to someone, let's say I want to type it to Scott Waldo, you'll see it pulls from your contacts so it will try to autocomplete from anybody who's currently in your contacts and your contacts by default will include the entire LC school district directory so anybody within our school district will pop up in your autocomplete if that's who you're trying to send the email to if you decide you don't want to send an email you can click this little X but doing that actually saves your email as a draft and then you'll see it pops over here into drafts. I've got one. So we can come back in here, open this up. If you didn't want to save a draft, if you just want to out and out delete it, you can use the trash can down here and that discards your entire draft. Next we'll look at replying and forwarding other emails. So if I look at this email, You'll see in the upper right we've got this little arrow for reply. We've also got a drop down right next to it with reply, reply to all, forward, and a few other options. Now at the bottom of the email you'll also see kind of a grayed out area for your reply. You can click on reply, reply to all, or forward, or you can just click anywhere in that box and that'll bring up your reply. Now if you had decided just to reply initially and now you decide, well, I actually want to reply to all, on this little arrow on the left, you can drop that down and change your option. Again, if you want to delete your email, you can discard the thing entirely by using the trash can. So we've already gone over delete, and you'll see these buttons up here in the top, the trash can is right there. I could delete this entire email by using this icon. 
We've also got the archive button, this little folder with the downward arrow. And when you archive something, it actually goes into your all mail folder. So you may see your all mail folder here on the left. For mine, I have it hidden. So if I come down here to more, that's where I'll see all mail. And in all mail is all of your sent and received mail. So that's where things go when you decide to archive them. One other thing we can do with incoming emails is we can mark them as spam. So if I want to report an email as spam, I can use this icon, a little octagon with the exclamation point. I'm just going to say it's just spam, it's not suspicious. And then I can go over into my spam folder, and I can view any of the emails that are in there. So you may want to check this periodically because your spam folder gets deleted every 30 days. So anything that's in your spam folder for 30 days is automatically removed. So now if I check this email, I've got a few options here at the top. Or if I open the email, I've got the same options. And I can mark something as not spam right from here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll bring it back to the inbox. Now one thing to note, kind of similar to spam, um, if you delete something, it remains in your trash for 30 days. But if you just leave items in your inbox, they will remain there forever. So you don't have to worry about archiving things if you're not in that habit. Um, if you don't archive something, it will still remain in your, in, in your inbox. Well, those are the basics. Um, that'll at least get you started with sending and receiving mail in Gmail. If you want to customize your experience or if you're interested in some of the more intermediate to advanced features of Gmail, then you can check out the next video.